Let's continue with the next part. Uh, right now I will actually duplicate one of my transitions again together with my um, actual original file. So right here, duplicate it, put it on top and change this to a different color so we can see that it belongs together. And now what we will do is actually make some kind of um, yeah, the fire in between it. So um, we're going to the uh, green screen footage and I'm going to set it to no track matte, put it above my transition and again uh, select my transition. Go for the transition and set this at an alpha matte and now we're only going to see the part where the actress is in the image right here. So we're going to get something like this looking cool. And now I will also add a color correction, color ramp again and we're going to the output cycle, do the same thing, ramp gray and drag the white right over here and also add a white point right over here. And of course you can play around with this, maybe this is a little bit too much. And there we go. And we're going to add a lot of blur to this one. So for this one I'm going to add Gaussian blur, I set it at 150 maybe. And let's uh, click on these two and duplicate them again and change the color again. I'm going to delete the Gaussian blur or actually set it at something like 10 right now. And then I'm going to add an effect called a blur and sharpen and CC vector blur. And now we're going to get give it something like this. And play around with the settings, you can get some really cool results, something like this. Uh, or play around with the different ones right here. I think the original one does look best. And then go for, go for effect uh, and sharp. And you can play with unsharp mask maybe and make it sharper uh, with a bigger radius. Of course, this is a little bit too exaggerated. Um, but give it some kind of popping effect right here. And now what this is going to be is like one of these is going to be set at screen and the other one as well. So set this one as screen as well. And we're going to concentrate on this one first. So this is going to be our reflection of the um, of, of the first layer right here. So right here I'm going to add a new color correction curves and I'm going to add more reds to it and less blues. Even more reds something like this and go into the green channel and add a S curve like this and what that's going to do is add, yeah you can already see it more yellows in the highlights and more dark reds or like purples in the highlights and uh, well in the darker areas and you're going to get a nice contrasty look to it so that's looking pretty cool maybe set it at add and then press T on the keyboard and just lower the opacity right here then I'm going to the next one and right here I will do the same thing so color correction curves and add a new curves add more reds to it like so less blues and again for the green we're going to add this s curve like so and for the rgb i'm going to just lower this so we get like more contrasty right here now we get a look like this so before the curves and after the curves we're getting a cool look to it and this is without the uh, reflection so you're getting something like this and of course you can add this to additive but you're getting a pretty cool look but because of the reflection right here you're going to get a better look right here so also for the green screen luma key i'm going to add more blur even so we really exaggerate it like so and we're getting a cool result there press t on the keyboard and just lower the opacity here maybe set it at 200 170 just don't exaggerate these things. And for the actual fire, I'm going to set it at somewhere around here for the RGB values. And the green, I'm going to increase it right here and decrease it uh, right here. And play around a little bit more with all these settings here. I'm going to delete the in sharp mask because I, because I think that it actually looks better without it. And yeah, I think this is looking pretty cool. Of course, if you want it to be, if you want to modify it a little bit better, you can go into the transition right here and just play around with the contrast right here. If you want less contrast, it's going to look like this. You can do the same thing right here. Maybe you want a little bit more glow on the body uh, because, but I don't really think that that's a good idea. Well actually increase it right here and decrease it right here so we get something like this and this is a nice cut uh, nice cutoff so let's see and also lower the opacity a little bit more 
And now you can see right here, uh, we actually want the skeleton to appear after the bright part. So I'm going back to the skeleton transition. And right here, I'm going to offset my Luma a little bit and go back to the main comp. Now you're going to see your skeleton a little bit better. So offsetting everything is going to make it look cool. And that way you have like multiple layers. Also for this first one, we're also going to offset this one. So we get these black parts a little bit later on the shot and we are getting something like this. Right here you can see that our skeleton actually doesn't look that great so you'll have to go back and do the puppet tool a little bit better so the deformation right here isn't like this but it's just playing around with these keyframes that we were playing with to get it better uh, as uh, for the results. So currently I'm going back to my Luma transition right here and I'm going to add the perfect glow which you can download on our website for free. I'm going to apply this to that effect and let's see what we can get with that. So I'm going to lower the threshold here and increase all well, the radius can actually be rather small and just increase the intensity but also increase the threshold here so we get something like this all right looking pretty cool we can also um, add another glow on top of it just a regular glow to make maybe have a uh, a bigger radius and lower the threshold here something like this and let's see what we can do with it okay so this is already looking pretty cool with the glow added to it uh, but you can actually see that we have a little problem here the glow is only on this part because we have a alpha channel so what we can do to fix this is actually click on all of these glows and copy them I'm actually going to cut them so hold control and press X on the keyboard and what I will do here is actually select both of these layers and I'm going to uh, set this back to normal for now and press T on the keyboard to see the opacity T. Okay, so it's 100%. Uh, so we have this kind of animation. What we'll need to do here is go to layer, pre-compose it, and add it to a new composition. So this is going to be our peel effect uh, comp and hit enter. And now we want to add a solid composite to it. And if we're going to do that, it's going to create a white background. We want it, uh, we want it to actually be black. And now we have something like this. And now if we're going to apply our glows, it's going to be around our character as well. So now we have a really nice glow. We can set this to additive. And now you're going to notice that our glow actually exceeds the, um, yeah, the area right here. So looking great right here and now we have one thing left to do and that's actually adding our particles and actually for this part I'm really sorry if you uh, follow this tutorial this long uh, but you will need a plugin called Trapcode Particular. You can achieve a similar result C uh, using CC Particle World. Uh, this is a uh, plugin that is actually already integrated in After Effects. Well it's not a plugin it's uh, an in integrated effect um, but for this I'm going to use Particular because it's just giving better results. So um, let's use that. Let's uh, duplicate one of our Luma keys, but with a colorama applied to it. So I'm going to put it on top and actually solo it for a second. Delete the effects right here and Gaussian blur also. So we need something like this uh, right here. Of course, it should be white. So I'm going to set it back at normal. Press T on the keyboard 100%. So we have something like that. And now what I want to do is go to effect keying and now we actually want to delete the black parts so extract and delete the black right here and actually set this at transparent so you can see right here this part is what we need okay and what I will do now is actually make a pre-comp out of this so layer pre-compose Uh, move all the attributes and this is going to be our uh, particle generator generator comp okay create a new solid layer and make this particles 
And I'm actually going to unselect my particle generator comp and also toggle the switches and make sure this is a 3D layer. This is necessary for the next part. Go to the particles, go to effects, trap code and add a, partic a particular effect to it. And now we're going to do something really cool. So at the beginning, I actually want my particles to start. So I'm going to offset my uh, solid layer, well actually my layer to the beginning of the transition. And then I will go into the emitter tab and right here it's set at point. I want to change this to layer. Now you will see this appearing, so layer emitter. And we're going to select here the particle generator comp. For the RGB usage, I'm going to set this at none so we can decide our color itself in our layer right here. Okay, so now we already have some velocity. I think this already looks okay. So I'm going to set it at like 1000 particles and let's see what we're getting here. Okay, so this is looking good already. What I will do here is actually go into the particle tab and go into the opacity over life and also make them fade out and maybe the life something to one. So they're fading out like this. Uh, maybe we want to uh, make a flicker to it. That's going to, to make it look pretty cool, I think. Uh, so they're going to flicker out and also make it like 0.7, so comma seven, and we're going to give a, a little bit less life to our particles. The size random set it at 100% and set the size to three. Uh, we get something like this, and then also I'm going to set, well actually this is a nice amount of particles. For the birth, I'm going to set it over life and also change the color to a black and white, um, but for the white part, I'm going to set it to a nice brown color like so, and click okay. And then we're going to duplicate our particles and make them even smaller and add a lot more. So maybe something like 3000, uh, maybe also add some randomization to it and change the size to something like one. And now we're going to get smaller parts, but these we want to make brighter. So right here for the bright parts, I'm going to set it at a nice yellow orange tone. And there we go. And also for the last color, I'm going to set it at a dark orange color. So right here, a dark orange color. And there we go, we are going to see them as well. Maybe add a little bit more of these particles, maybe something like 10,000. We're going to see them a little bit better right over here. And also set the size maybe to one comma three. Okay, there we go, we are going to notice them a little bit better. And now I'm going back to my lower uh, rendering motion blur and also set this at on right here. So this is at the complete bottom of that effect and add a shorter angle to it and just increase it until you get these nice lines and increase the opacity boost to actually see your particles. And I'm going to set it at um, maybe 3000 again so we don't have that many. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time and actually set it at very smaller uh, small particles. So something like comma seven. And now we have smaller parts in the background but actually we need to uh, do the uh, randomization again so we have them in between the other particles, okay looking great and actually for the second parts I'm going to make these a little bit darker so we really notice a difference in here and there we go well this is a little bit too much okay and now we're getting something toggle the switches set all of these particles well actually the first two to additive and then the other ones to multiply maybe we're getting some similar results like this and actually for the first parts I'm not going to set it at feather but at cloudlet we're going to get like more flokes like this. For the opacity, I'm going to set it lower like so. And opacity random to 100 and just increase it so we have subtle uh, effects in between, the, uh, in between these. And now for the second particles, I'm even going to set the life a little bit lower so something like uh, 0.4. And for the first ones to 0.4 as well and the first ones and the second one even lower because I think they, these are a little bit too long on screen. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so these are looking pretty cool. Actually, I want to uh, zero out my velocity because I don't think it looks that good and do it for all of these layers. And I'm also uh, only going to work with like the, the wind effect. And let's preview this. And of course, they're not going to move now. So this is not what we actually want. Emitter Z also set this at zero. And 
I'm actually going to untoggle the transparency and just solo these layers so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to make him disappear like this because I think it's flickering a little bit too much. And just these smaller ones, I'm going to keep these flickering. And just so one of these, and I'm going to increase the amount to something like 10,000 so I can actually see what I'm doing here because I'm not completely sure how long I should actually keep him alive. Maybe change the life to something like two right here. Okay, and change them back to 1000. And let's now go back to the bottom here and go into the physics tab, go for the air and just move them up a little bit. And also a little bit to the camera and to the left. Okay, and now if we're going to preview this, our first particles are going to the left, as you can see right here. And now all we need to do is just do the same thing for all of our other particles right here. You can also go here in the, fir um, in the um, in the turbulence field actually and just increase our turbulence a little bit but just make sure you also lower your scale to something like 3 and that's also going to give a, a little bit better results and now they're moving a little bit uh, more in turbulence motions I'm going to increase the value a little bit more okay but now we're getting something a lot better Also for the life random, I'm going to set this at 100 and I'm going to increase it to something like 2000 right here. And now we are going back to these particles and do the same thing. So go into the physics and go into the air and move them to the left and to the, well, up a little bit. And for the Z uh, and the emitter in Z, I'm also going to increase it just a touch and for the turbulence field I'm also going to improve I'll, uh, increase this and lower the scale here to something like three and let's preview okay so this is a little bit too much in the effect position so 250 should, should be okay and for the shutter angle I'm going to set this at 500 so we don't have this exaggeration Okay, and then last particles also let's look take a look at these and go into the physics again and the air and just move them up and to the left. Maybe more to the left than up because they are smaller. Maybe a little bit to the camera. And now we're getting different motions for these particles. And for the first particles, the black ones, I want to set the life really low. So comma two, uh, comma four. Let's have a look here. And comma two for these. All right, so this is looking great. And now we need one more thing to so duplicate one of these particles and we're going to set it at screen for now. And we're actually going to change our uh, sphere again to cloud led, but we're going to increase our size here. So the size can be fairly big like so. We're going to set it at a black and white like so. And right here also for the feather, uh, set it at 100%. So we get a nice feather amount here, size 100. And for the opacity set this at like one. And you'll pass the random to 100, maybe set it at 2 or 3, and change the size to something like 50. And just increase the amount to something like 5000. And this is going to be like some smoke of uh, that's coming off her body. Um, maybe 10,000 can also be okay. And set this back to 1. Also, I'm going to change the color to a darker color, like so, and click OK and maybe set it at multiply this time. And let's preview. And of course we want the life to be a lot longer, so something like one, well actually for the clouds here, to one. 
and I don't want a gradient I just want it to be at birth and just set it at a darker color click OK and also press T on the keyboard for the actual layer and maybe set it even lower uh, so it's not that exaggerated but we just want a subtle kind of effect of these clouds that are that are filling up our background actually put this below all of these layers so where other particles are coming on top of it okay so this is looking great and now I want to do one more duplicate for uh, well duplicate for the clouds here duplicate them and change the color to white and actually set the opacity back to um, 100 maybe set this to normal okay there we go and actually we can change the opacity something like maybe 10 we just want some kind of variation in there like so and maybe less particles 5000 okay there we go and now what I want to do is click on this layer layer pre-compose this is going to be our luma uh, transition effect but what I, I need is actually I'm going to pre-compose this layer pre-compose it clouds luma click OK. and now that we have done that it's actually going to automatically make a copy here uh, of the generator comp I'm going to make this a 3D layer and I'm going to set this at none for now and just select it again and that's going to create our light again and there we go so now we have this kind of animation and all we need to do actually is just adding a new layer adjustment and we're going to rename this to displacement map and I'm going to untoggle the cloud luma right here and add a displacement map to that part so to the adjustment layer and right here I'm going to select our clouds luma jump back into the luma and we have to do one more thing so for the layers for the particles we actually want them to be exactly white press T on the keyboard and just increase the opacity again so it's completely white right here as you can see uh, maybe we can play a little bit with the opacity random and just set it a little bit higher so we get something like this and for the background layer we actually want a new solid make this a complete uh, gray solid for so for B right here I'm going to set this at 50 and I click OK now we have a perfect gray and this is going to be put at the bottom the reason why I'm doing this everything that's white is going to be affected one way everything that's black is going to be affected another way and everything that's gray is going to stay in position so we go back to the main comp for the displacement uh, the clouds luma is selected and now if we're going to increase this part you can actually see that it's only affecting this little area so I'm going to set this at 30 and 30 and wrap pixels around maybe okay and I actually want my clouds to be a little bit smaller so for the particles I'm going to set this at like 10 and now if we're going back we're going to get like a little distortion here a nice distortion as you can see and now let's do another preview and actually we can increase the size just a touch something like 50 uh, 30 I mean 25 okay and we want the displacement to be less 15 okay and what you can do if, if you have some issues like this you can just add a motion tile to it and just put it on top like so mirror the edges here and we can do 110 110 and there we go so now we have fixed that issue right here and now what we can do is actually uh, create another new adjustment layer on top of everything and rename this shake and actually I'm going to un uh, lock this and I'm going to select everything and pre-compose this so layer pre-compose it right here um, effect comp click OK and then right click time time enable time remapping and right here our effect is starting so I'm going to click on this keyframe right here but right here we're standing we're actually falling right here so right here I'm going to delete it I want it to start right here or actually right here just at the start of our effect and then I'm just going to drag this in here and now we have like a nice uh, fast motion maybe even faster let's uh, move it like so press B on the keyboard right here and preview this part now we're going to get a nice glitch motion into our yeah, transition and actually we can set it right here set the re resolution to half and preview it once more 
now we get get this uh, nice glitch motion and what I want to do here to the shake is I want to apply the wiggle uh, preset right here that you can also download for free on our website and actually if you put it right here uh, you can click on the slider and amplitude and I'm going to put these two right here at the beginning and the frequency I want to set it to 15 the amplitude 25 and of course if you're going to increase it like right here set this back to maybe one and maybe one as well so we get a smooth motion right here and now we get like a short shake here set it back at five maybe or actually we want to keep this quite high but this lower set it at 10 and now we get an initial burst like so you can also click over here go into the shake and go into the transform and click on the stopwatch for scale and just move it up a little bit and you can actually move all these down here and what I can do is go for the um, position for my composition, press P on the keyboard, click on the po uh, position and move the anchor point towards the start of our effect, press S on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch for the scale, move the scale a little bit over here and then just scale it up a little bit, we get something like this, so a nice zoom effect and of course if you zoom in more you're going to get a better result, toggle the switches, put on the motion blur and you're going to get something like this, so this is pretty cool. And of course, one more thing that you need to do in that's adding the flare. So what I've done is actually I use our flare that you can buy on our website, but you can use whatever flare you want. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to import it right here and then I just add my composition to it and go into that flare tab and go into the control settings, set the position right over here. And I'm going to increase my size uh, to something like this here go back to the main comp toggle the switches and set this at a screen it can be a little bit more even and then right here if we go into the comp here for this we want it starting right over here so I'm going to keyframe it a little bit so I'm going to keyframe the amount a few frames back set it at 100 and actually also click on the keyframe for the position press U on the keyboard move this keyframe right here and move it to the left so it's actually slamming in and then right here it's fading out to zero okay spikes radius zero and there we go and actually for this one I'm going to unselect these all here we don't need them uh, we just need the flare go back to the main comp and let's see Okay, it actually needs to disappear a little bit faster, like right here, it should be gone. Um, I'm going to move it down a little bit because it's actually in this position more and fade it off like so. And actually right here we can just cut it off and like so. So it's getting slammed in, it's zooming out and it disappears. Actually it needs to be even faster, like, or actually we want to zoom out f uh, longer. So. and actually move this up a little bit more okay there we go actually go a little bit faster as well so I'm going to select all of these and just make them appear uh, faster and there we go so this is the final result and this is looking great and then we can do a uh, final adjustment layer and rename this color and right here I'm going to apply a color lit so apply color lit and apply it right here and I'm going to search one of our lits I'm going to use the apocalypse right here and just lower the intensity a little bit and I'm going to uh, set this at maybe 50. Yeah, there we go. This is kind of the final result for our effect. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel for more. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.